probably about two hours. <laughs> yeah. Well, I thought they worked together. You guys own two different vineyards? Or? Oh, yeah. he's Napa Valley. I'm Santa Cruz Valley. I'm Emily Geiger, and I am a co-owner for Craft Culture East Labs in Hancock, Michigan. I'm Dave House, and I graduated uh, in 1965 in electrical engineering. My name is uh, Tom Porter, and uh, I graduated from Michigan Tech in 1968 with a degree in electrical engineering. Um, I'm Ryan Gray. I am the co-owner of Electric Drone Supply. I uh, graduated from Tech in 2007. I'm Catherine Gray, or Katie Gray. I graduated in 2007. Well, welcome everybody. Thanks so much for coming. We just want to have a conversation today about wine, beer, life, and the Michigan Tech Connection. And I thought we could start off first just tell me about yourselves. So I know that wine making is a passion of yours, Dave, because when I looked you up on LinkedIn, that's how you were listed. I was very confused. I was like, is this the same Dave House? And after doing a little, I, I figured it out that, and I was like, okay, clearly it's a priority. So what, what brought you to Winemaking. Michigan Tech and alcohol yeah. all made, made yeah. go together. Oh, yeah. Hand in hand. Well, first I get developed a uh, taste for good wine on Intel expense accounts. Uh, <laughs> I was the one guy on the executive staff that had come from the computer industry, and the rest of them were physicists and chemists. And so when a customer came into town, the sales guy would ask me to have dinner with them, and they'd hand me the wine list, and I'd hand it to the sales guy. After about five years of that, I said, give that to me. Uh, <laughs> I, I've had I these, I know, let's have this one or this one. And uh, so, having acquired a taste for good wine on other people's budgets, uh, <laughs> I built a house. I, I, I fall in love with this uh, hilltop ridge 20 years before and managed to buy it and design and build the house. And, and uh, so the architect and the builder, the interior designer and the landscape architect were having a ball spending my money. Because uh, the stock market was going up and I wasn't putting any limits on them. It's this long curved driveway. What, what are we going to do along the driveway? I said, ah, California wildflowers. I said, really? <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice to drive in through a vineyard? The architect said, yeah, that'd be great. And the landscape architect says, I've never done a vineyard. <laughs> and I pointed up to Jeffrey Patterson's house and his vineyard and I says, Jeffrey Patterson is one of the best winemakers in California. He lives right there. Let's get him down here. So he came down and he looked at it and he says, yeah, yeah, this would really be a good place to grow grapes. And you know what? You grow grapes, I'll buy them from you. Following retirement from industry, I uh, bought a vineyard. <laughs> Makes a lot of sense, right? Yeah, sure. And uh, it was an established vineyard with uh, red uh, grapes, predominantly Cabernet and Syrah. And uh, the following year, this was 2005, and the following year, we built an underground winery. And uh, along with the tasting room and barrel storage, it's about 17,000 square feet underground with a 515-foot tunnel that goes from one side of the mountain on our property to the other. When I graduated, I went to work for IBM, and there was a, an older gentleman who was into wine, and he gave me a bottle of Chateau de Pop. Now, that's a... That's a French Rhone wine that is one of the nicest wines in France, and I opened that bottle and I was absolutely stunned by the aromas and the flavors and the complexity. And I guess you could say I was bitten by the wine bug at that time. <laughs> I began to buy wine and collect wine, and when I got to 6,000 bottles, my oh wife my said, gosh. she said, maybe we should do something different. <laughs> So I had been actually dreaming about owning a, a vineyard for about 25 years uh, prior to purchase, purchasing the property. This all begs the question, why get into these businesses? They're not traditionally what one might consider. When you're in the middle of nowhere, you got to find things to do. And so I got into homebrewing. And since we were in Wyoming, there wasn't a whole lot of crap beer at the time anyway. Homebrewing transitions from, oh, I'm going to do it on my kitchen stove top to how much more can I brew in one sitting? Because the amount of time taken to brew one gallon versus five gallons versus 15 or 45 gallons is the same amount of time. Now it's a habit that blew up. So, um, and today and it's even... Thousands of others get the habit. And 
now we're, today we're helping many more get in the same habit, yes. At this point I call it a hobby gone wild, because it originally took over a spare bedroom, and then my garage, and then part of the downstairs office, and I said, this is enough, we need to find a real commercial space. And it blossomed from there, it really has. We've been um, capturing native strains, we, they're wild yeast strains caught in nature. We try to avoid the term wild because people associate it with Bertanomyces. Um, a different brewing strain, uh, which that produces sour beers. But yeah, everyone's in love with that because everyone wants to brew with all Michigan, right now, like all Michigan uh, beers, with all Michigan locally sourced products or ingredients um, is really highly desired. And so that, uh, it's a hot topic right now. Very yeah, good. actually, Electric People Brewing want. Supply sells our uh, yeast to home brewers and we have several inquiries a week asking, well, do you carry all Michigan products? And we carry Michigan grain, Michigan hops, and Michigan yeast. So if you want to brew Michigan beer, we can provide you with the products to go. to go. We have a tasting room that overlooks Silicon Valley on one side and the Santa Cruz Mountains on the other side. And very little, talk about local, very little of our wine actually leaves the compound. Really? Because people buy it and drink it in the tasting room. <laughs> <laughs> We're <home> there. <laughs> it's <And> <laughs> It made wow. there, and it's bottled there, so and it's the drank there. Yeah. Mark, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I, I thoroughly enjoy the farming side of it. But when we built the winery, the thing that attracted me about that was actually, I had this idea that because I was an engineer, and I understood process control, and I understood Six Sigma, and I understood all of these technologies, that I would fill the, the winery full of technology and control all the critical quality, critical quality process parameters and we would make world-class wines. And then I found out that winemaking is an art. <laughs> and I'm not an artist. <laughs> Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> so I hired a winemaker. Uh, it turns out it truly is an art. The winemaker's palate has so many variables and it takes a, a lifetime of experience to actually become a really great winemaker. Well, they say that wine is a matter of flavor and finish and complexity and so forth. And then some people say it's not the same for beer, that beer is a matter of opinion. Would you agree with that? No, I wouldn't. Well, I opinion. think they're both. 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 Well, the beer business is getting so much like the wine business they in are. terms of going to beer tastings and then yeah. tasting yeah. notes on the on the beer the way that it's being merchandised and sold it's the whole being paired and paired with <laughs> food yeah. and, I mean yeah. it's a the complexity yeah. that they're bringing to beer today versus even five years ago is just almost overwhelming I mean it could be the same same distributor and it could be two row from the same company but over the course of the well, years the flavor changes too there you're dealing yeah. with nature. Right. Yeah. Nature has a whole lot of I mean, if you get a wet year, the, the grain is different. If you get a really dry year, the grain is different. Yeah, so, so I great. think, you know, it's a matter of individual power. Yeah. yeah. So if you grew up with beer, then maybe you prefer beer. Yeah. Yeah. If you grew up with wine, you might prefer wine, or you learn, maybe you learn. Maybe love yeah. 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 In fact, you know, I, there was a saying in Napa: it takes a lot of beer to make a great wine. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. But you know, it, it depends on the situation. Uh, uh, if I have a Mexican food or Chinese food <laughs> or Japanese food, I'm gonna have beer. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Kind of totally. More. But if I'm having French food, I'm gonna have wine. Yes. Yeah. So it's all a matter of flavor. Yeah. So, so, yeah. And the time of day, and what you feel like, and whether you're eating or not, and who you're with. And yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Well, it's all good. It's all good. It's a social <laughs> event sometimes. Yeah. Not, well, not picky. <laughs> but drinking and, eat, and eating is a social event. It's a bonding right. event that uh, brings the tribe together. Yeah. Yes. Well, thanks, everybody. Yep. Thanks for being a part of this community and coming and sharing. And I. I don't have a glass right now where I'd offer a toast. Does anybody have a, does anybody have a toast? I'll just say, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>